Hey guys, Jay and Mike coming to you today from Plymouth, Pennsylvania, just outside of Anacoke. And the reason we're here today is to check out the Avondale Mine Disaster Site. This is a place I visited last winter. I actually did it at nighttime where I did a ghost hunt with uh, Jeff Grant Media. I didn't really get to show you the place too well because for one, it was covered in snow and two, it was dark out. So I wanted to return and show you what it looks like during the daytime. It's more of like a memorial site. There's not a whole lot to see there. There are a few structures and um, some information there, some plaques and stuff like that. But we're going to take a walk down the trail here. It's about a third of a mile to get there from the parking spot. And um, along the way though, throughout the video, I'm going to share some older photos, some before photos, before it was torn down as the colliery. And um, I'll also share some information throughout the video too as well. So come along with us as we check it out. Now to give you some brief history about this, this was a uh, colliery back here. And back in September of 1869, a fire took place and it ended up burning and killing 108 men and then two men rescuers actually died of suffocation from poisonous gases down in the mine it was the largest mine disaster in history up to that date and what's left of it now is an old ventilation shaft because after that fire happened they had to make changes to make it more safe so it kind of got restructured and they added a ventilation shaft to avoid anything like that happening in the future. So that's still there, as well as some remnants of some buildings and stuff like that. But I'll share more details as we go, but that's just a uh, brief history as to what we're going to be checking out here. And uh, we should be there in a few minutes. So as we're making our way down the trail here, you can start seeing some remnants of some structures or buildings. And that way you know you're getting close. So as you can see up in the distance here, there's some foundations and rock and brick walls. And right above that is Route 11. And I think at one point this actually crossed Route 11 uh, further up. But as we make our way down, <clears throat> we're going to encounter some more foundations. And past the site here is where some of the buildings are still intact. I think there was a wash house or maybe an office that was left behind. So I think they are marked to keep out due to the Preservation Society. but. I'll give you a quick look at it anyways, but uh, this is what we're coming to find right here. So as you'll see in the photos, you have to imagine there was a big collar right here and um, it really basically connected up to that stone wall up there. You can kind of see it in the background. It's really windy too. But uh, there's a lot of different foundations here, rails, and some structures back in the woods. So it's a decent amount of items to see here. And um, I'll show you some of the information they have posted here. And um, I'll share some more of it with you as well. But this is what we're looking for. I should say what you'll see when you first come here. So they actually have some of the building's uh, photos posted here, but I'll share more throughout the video. But what we're looking at, this large building was right there. And it's quite an operation. So it says, you are here. This is the Avondale mine operated for almost 100 years, 1867 to 1960. I'll uh, put this on here for a minute. If you want to read the rest of it, just pause the video. So you see down here, we got a small section of rails, some different foundations. 
So you can see in front of us this massive stone wall. This is where the colliery would have been. And one of the coolest features here is the ventilation shaft here. Which up until a few years ago was actually open. I've seen pictures and videos where you can actually crawl in there, but they have backgated it since then. You kind of see in there, it goes back a little ways. There's a big pipe underground. Looks like some rooms back there. It's pretty interesting, and it goes down to the left here as well, but this is just the ventilation shaft. It wasn't the actual mine itself, but this did connect to the workings underground. Hopefully you're able to hear me. I was just mentioning that uh, this was the ventilation shaft for the mine. It wasn't the actual shaft that caught fire, but it did connect to the workings underground. But it's pretty neat to see that though. It looks like there's a room back there and it goes down towards this direction. So it's pretty neat to come here and see this. Let's see what else is here. So they have another little board here with some more pictures and information. You see America's single worst anthracite mine disaster. So I'll let you read that. That's some of the information I mentioned before. And they have a list of all the victims' names. And there's some more photos. This one says Spring 1905. I have some more information as well. Try and get you to read that. Just pause the video if you want to read the rest of that. So when you come here, come check this out. You get to see all the names of the victims and you get to see the information that uh, that's how everything's laid out here. It tells you what some of the buildings were. And uh, again, further in the woods there, there's some intact structures. So we're gonna take a walk and check those out as well. But it's pretty neat to see here though. It's a nice area, it's maintained. It's a nice grassy area up here, the fence. And of course the, the ventilation shaft. So just to give you a little bit more information I found on the website here, it says during the morning of September 6th, 1869, the coal breaker atop Steuben shaft at the Avondale Colliery caught fire. The official investigators concluded that the furnace located well over 100 feet from the shaft but connected to it by a flue was the source of ignition with flames traveling up the wood reinforced shaft and engulfing the entire wooden structure up to the head house 60 feet above the head frame. So you have to imagine here with the colliery here, there's a vertical shaft with a breaker right on top of it and is lined by wood to reinforce it so no falling material fell on the miners. And what flames do, they rise up. And once they started, they just kept rising and being that was the only entrance to exit, there was no way to get in or out. And with all those flames and the coal down there and the lack of ventilation, the gas is set in and the two rescuers perish as well. And it says here that after the fire started, the preparations were made to put a derrick over the opening which men could descend into the mine. And it says uh, the derrick was set up around 5.30 and consensus was reached to send a dog into the mine first to make sure it was safe. The dog was lowered in and brought out alive, indicating that it would be safe for humans. Before the dog had been lowered into the shaft, a number of men had called into the mine hoping that they would receive an answer from the imprisoned miners. Some claimed they heard a response, but most have not heard anything. It was repeated several times. After the dog was brought up out of the mine, had been deemed safe, two volunteers, Charles Vartu and the Grand Tunnel Colliery, was asked to descend into the mine. 
and report on the conditions inside. 6.30 p.m. Vartu stepped into the bucket attached to the derrick and was lowered slowly into the shaft. 14 minutes later he gave a signal to ascend. Vartu reported there was a timber halfway down the shaft which caused an obstruction and that at least two men would need to go down to remove it. More volunteers were requested. Charles Jones of Plymouth and Stephen Evans of Nottingham shaft were selected to be lowered into the mine. Equipped with tools such as a hatchet and a hook, they signaled to stop their descent several times to remove obstructions. They reached the bottom of the shaft at 7.05 and stepped out to explore, emerging from the mine nine minutes later. They reported that they had found two dead mules in a gangway and had pounded on a closed door but received no response. Later in the evening, another two volunteers, Thomas W. Williams of Plymouth and David Jones of Grand Tunnel, decided to enter the mine to discover the condition of the men within. They descended and a pick and shovel were sent down after them. After waiting some time without report, however, another pair of men were sent in to look for them. Both Williams and Jones were found laying on the ground unmoving. Williams was brought up immediately and declared dead from the fumes, and Jones was brought up soon after and also declared dead. This demonstrated the rapid accumulation of black damp, also known as carbon dioxide, and low levels of oxygen and capable of supporting life. There's a lot more information that you could read about this. Uh, if you just go on to Google search Avondale Mine Disaster. There's several websites about it that go into a lot of detail. Also show some of the recovery effort photos, um, illustrations. So definitely something to look into if you want to learn more information about it. But it's pretty cool that they made this memorial to come and show your respect to the people that lost their lives here. Okay, now that we checked out the main memorial site here, we're going to make our way further down the trail, a little bit further, and check out some of the remaining structures. But honestly, throughout the whole property here, there's stuff everywhere to look at. Uh, if you show, if I show you over here, there's some foundation walls here, some steps over there, and stuff's really hidden in the woods here. But the time to come check it out is now, the winter time, when all the foliage is gone because there's some tracks. Everything's much more visible now, so if you come in the summertime, it might be a little bit more challenging to find everything, except for obviously the main site here. But the other stuff is hidden in the woods and a little bit more uh, accessible this time of year. So that's where we started the trail that we came down. There's some of the foundations and retaining walls, stairs and the unmistakably large stone wall where the collar was at. As you can see up there hiding behind the trees is one of the buildings and we just got to find an easier route to get to it because there's a lot of thorns and vegetation and some walls in between here and there so we'll find our way up there and show you a up close look at it. So this is another structure that we found just a little bit further past the one we were just showing you. So we're going to check this one out first and then make our way back to the other one. I believe there's a way into this. And he made it.
Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe this is a wash room or a wash house and the coal will come down those chutes and get processed in here. not the best stairwell that you want to use or set of steps. You can see there were other floors above this but they are for the most part collapsed. The signs of a fire. Up here, what's look like icicles I believe are, I think what someone explained it, it's like from the cement that kind of leaks through. Some type of mineral. getting some shots for his video. Okay, so that was a quick look inside this building here, which I believe is the wash house, but don't quote me on that. So we're gonna head outside and truck through and get to the first building and give you a shot of that one. As you can see, it is posted here, caution, property of Plymouth Historic Society. So if you come here, be respectful. Don't do anything that's going to risk getting you in trouble like graffiti and evangelism. But these are neat places to check out. You can see here this had a, a brick wall with some concrete like plaster over it. And obviously people have been here partying, having fires. Take you with me for a walk up there to show you what it looks like. There's nothing supporting these steps underneath it, so I'm not going any further. You can see it's collapsed.
That doesn't look entirely safe right there. So here's the second floor, where what's left of it. Now right next to the building here at the steps there's something kind of interesting. It's like a almost like a chimney top. And a tire in there and lots of water. This looks like a slid and it had like notches to put it in place. That looks pretty neat right there with the build look, building kind of toppling on the corner. It's like a scene from an earthquake movie. So if you follow the yellow rope road, it'll bring you right back to the main site where the ventilation shaft is. But you want to use caution here because there is a drop off. You can even see there's more remnants hiding in there. Okay, right now I'm going to make it up towards the wall here. Mike's going to hold the camera and we'll get a a good visual and to see the magnitude of this wall compared to me so hang on a second so you can see based on me standing up here just how massive this wall is not only lengthwise but height it was pretty impressive that they built this back in the 1800s and still standing to this day it's definitely a feat of engineering All right, guys, that was a look at the Avondale Mine Disaster Site. Pretty impressive place. There's a lot to see here, a lot of structures left behind, foundations, and information. There's a lot you can learn about coming here and seeing it for yourself. Not only do they have some of the older historical photos, but they have a lot of information, including the victims' names. So if you want to come and see this for yourself, now you know what to look for and what you can expect if you come here. I'm going to turn it over to Mike. He'll tell you what he thinks as well. That was pretty neat. Um... I probably drove by this site probably at least a dozen times, if not more, and didn't even realize it's right there. It's, I mean, it's a stone throw away from the road, but it's it's pretty impressive. It's it's nice to see a memorial site like this. Yeah, it's not often you get to come to a, a disaster site and to basically wander around at your at your own leisure. Um, just keep in mind the buildings are part of the property here. They are watched, so don't do anything that's going to risk you getting in trouble, like graffiti vandalism theft just be respectful of the property and enjoy it through photos or walking around checking it out but uh, just again be respectful of the property some of the areas are dangerous so just be careful anyways if you have any comments or questions leave them down below i'll do my best to answer them for you and make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it if you want to see more adventures or videos like this just hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell and don't forget you can check mike's slideshow video on his channel good day for decay I'll post the link to his channel down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.